boost, we're throwing the E36 Turbo LS swap on the dyno. So we're here at Highline Motorsports. I got the E36, the GMW here, Turbo LS swap. We're gonna do some pulls on the car and see what it puts down. Um, just based on the way I'm driving it and everything, I feel like it's close to 500 wheel, maybe a little bit more. Um, it makes a lot of torque though. The thing just comes out of the hole really hot. And uh, it, I don't wanna slip the clutch, so I might actually turn that down. Yeah, the clutch started to slip after banging gears, two, three, four, hitting fourth gear, it was, it slipped a little bit. So uh, we're gonna just keep doing a couple different things, kind of tweak it, try to you know, work the boost a little bit and see if we can get it to be nice and flat. But uh, stay tuned, we'll let you know how it goes. So just to recap the car a little bit, it's an LQ4 6 liter, it's a Gen 3. I have a uh, Brian Tooley Stage 1 turbo cam, LS6 intake, uh, Borg Warner SXE 372 turbo. Uh, you mix that in with ID1050 injectors, it's got a Walbro 525 fuel pump, it's on 93 octane, and when you have peak boost at 14 and a half PSI, which is where it's at now, it's at around 13.2 degrees of timing. So uh, we'll see actually what it ends up putting down. Um, it's still, in my opinion, it's still kind of conservative. I don't have it running on E85 yet because I actually, I don't think the clutch will hold up. So we're going to have to upgrade that. This episode today is brought to you by Highline Motorsports. It's where I am right now to get the car dynoed. They specialize in all things BMW, whether it's repair, maintenance, dyno tuning, and performance. Make sure to check them out on Facebook and on Instagram at Highline518. God, I really almost want to just delete my power steering because it whines so much and I hate the sound of that. Here's what I'm worried about today. The car screams and pulls hard down low, but it just doesn't have the same pull up top. So I think we're going to be struggling a little bit with being able to control the boost levels. Uh, also because of that, I think the torque spike down low is really going to hurt the clutch and cause it to slip. So I have to try to figure out a way to adjust this AEM True Boost boost controller to make sure that it actually ramps in a little bit more as opposed to just hitting so hard down low because it actually ends up tailing off a lot up top. Um, by doing that though, I am also worried that it's going to tail off even more up top as opposed to before when I had the wastegate cracking at like 8 PSI and now I have to have the wastegate crack at like 5. This first run is just to get an idea of how the car is and kind of a shakedown so, so it's not a full pull. Right off the bat you can see the torque spike and I felt like the clutch may have slipped just a little bit so I adjusted the wastegate to crack down a little sooner and made the duty cycle a little higher so hopefully it holds more up top. That one was all the way to 6,500 RPM redline. You can see the torque spike there and it tail off and the horsepower not climb over 5,000 RPM is really where it falls in its face. And that's where the boost starts tailing off too. I want to make 13, 14 PSI up top and it's just not right now. With the wastegate cracking sooner, I turned up the duty cycle a little bit more to see how much more it would make up top.
you notice on the right gauge, you can see the boost jump to almost 15 PSI and then just taper off to 9, 8 PSI by the time it hits red line. So I ended up at 487 horse and uh, about 650 pound feet of torque. I didn't really want to push it any more than that. The IATs were getting really high up there and my fuel pressure was dropping. So I ended up having to adjust that as well. So the car made 487 horsepower and 650 pound feet of torque. The thing just moves out down low and uh, it was making even more torque. I had to change the way that the boost controller opened the gate so it opens earlier because it was just making so much torque down low the clutch was spinning and uh, you know 650 was right about the mark. However, I'm a little upset because McLeod told me that this thing would hold 800 whether that's at the wheel or that's at the crank is beyond me, but the dyno has determined that was a lie. So the limitation that I'm having with the AEM True Boost Boost Controller is, is if I want to limit the torque that I have with the torque spike down low, I have to have the gate open up a lot sooner, but that is also causing the boost to bleed off at higher RPM as well. It You just don't get one and the other where I want not as much torque down low and to be able to hold the PSI up top. So I'm going to need to figure out a way to actually get the duty cycle to change as per RPM and the AEM True Boost is not going to be able to do that. But there is a way to do it with my Holley Terminator X by adding a new configuration to be able to ramp up the boost duty cycle through the solenoid but do it through the ECU. I'm working on building the table now, so it's at only like 30% duty cycle down low and like 70% duty cycle up top. So I have a nice, broad, steady torque curve so I can build boost throughout the entire RPM range. So next up for the car is to wire up the Holley Terminator X to be able to control the boost on my solenoid through the PCM itself. That way I can fine tune it exactly how I want. Also, got to focus on some heat wrap and stuff inside the engine bay to help keep the car cool and keep the IATs down. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're into this kind of stuff and uh, be sure to upload a video every week on all the different builds that we do. So in the meantime, thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.